proactive, 30th of November 2023, as investments in Australia decline, China aims to strengthen diplomatic ties with Australia. Because of Australia's demands for a probe into the Chinese biological warfare virus, China severed diplomatic ties with that country. COVID-19 In his Tuesday night lecture to the Australia-China Relations Institute ACRI, at Sydney's UTS, top Chinese diplomat Liu Jianchao advocated for modifying Australian laws affecting Chinese investments. He underlined the importance of Australia's position being clear and highlighted how prohibitions and denials have tempered Chinese investor enthusiasm. The Communist Party's International Department Chief, Liu, expressed alarm about the reduction in Chinese investment in Australia. Liu called for reconsideration in light of the improved short-term political ties, citing the Huawei ban and other investment rejections as significant factors. Due to what is thought to be an excessive focus on security concerns, Chinese real estate investment in Australia has significantly decreased. A recent University of Sydney and KPMG analysis indicates a sharp decline from 16.2 billion US dollars in 2016 to barely 1.4 billion US dollars in 2022. Influence on the vital mineral and rare earth industries, which are abundant in Australia. The negative effect on Chinese investors, who increasingly favor countries like Africa and the Middle East, was brought to light by former Trade Minister Andrew Robb. Chinese investors are concerned about Australia's vital minerals and rare earths sectors. Citing reasons of national interest, Federal Treasurer Jim Chalmers prevented a Chinese fund from growing its ownership in the rare earths company Northern Minerals in February of this year. Liu emphasized the value of bilateral economic cooperation and urged respect for WTO and market regulations. Re-evaluating investment policies, he suggested, may lead to better political relations and increased economic cooperation. Professor of Chinese Business and Management Hans Hendrischk agreed, pointing out the need for definite and self-assured investment policies. Liu's opinions are supported by James Lawrence Essen, director of the Australia-China Relations Institute, who highlights the possible advantages of Chinese investment, particularly in vital industries like technology and minerals. He supports a moderate strategy that protects national security without going too far in the other direction and impeding economic expansion.